So, sneaker grails, what are they? Do people still use the term today? And has it changed over time in today's sneaker culture? That's what this video is going to be about. Let's go. What's up guys? Thanks once again for tuning in. This is Kixplore where we talk everything about sneakers, lifestyle, travel, and a little bit of everything in between. And today we're talking about sneaker grails. Okay, I feel like it's a term that a lot more sneakerheads used maybe 10 to 15 years ago, and it's sort of kind of changed in definition in today's sneaker culture because that's where when sneaker kind of culture was, I do believe it was more in its purest or unfiltered form. Uh, when I say pure or unfiltered, I basically mean, you know, it was when people use sneakers a lot more because they wanted to wear sneakers or like they like sneakers genuinely because they like sneakers not so much of what they see from social media the term sneaker grails i do really believe it kind of evolved differently back then to what it has become now just like the term hype beast at the beginning people were using it for a term that for a person that wore clothes or apparel just for the sake of other people's kind of uh, approval or their likes that kind of stuff and now it's basically uh, a term used for anyone that wears supreme or really hype stuff but the term sneaker grails back then I do really believe that it was more for something or a pair of sneakers that was really unobtainable now when I say unobtainable it was more because of how expensive it might have been back in that time on you know that kind of price range back in that time or because of the kind of difficulties it would be to obtain that sneaker it was sort of like the last sneaker you will ever cop in your collection basically so those were kind of the terms or the kind of meanings that uh you know sneaker grails had back in the day now i do believe it's sort of got a diluted meaning now i'm not saying it's kind of different now but because of the all the kind of different sneaker platforms that we have now it's so much easier to obtain any sneaker basically and uh yeah just the pure accessibility of these sneakers kind of has changed the meaning of the term sneaker grails whereas back then sneakers or sneaker grails were harder to obtain obviously because you had to have the right network around you or the right people that knew about that sneaker around you because it was basically what was local to you and that that was how you're going to get your sneakers whether it be people stores or like events because that's the thing back then if you if you found someone that was selling a certain sneaker you still needed to know the sizing you still needed to know the condition the price and all those kind of different kind of information just to get the sneaker and sometimes you know that wasn't an instant uh kind of uh response that you were gonna get and yeah sometimes it would take even like more than a day just for them to reply that uh yeah we do have it but it's a size 13 and it's in a really bad condition and it costs you know this much you know uh, like th that's why it was so much harder to obtain sneakers back then that was the kind of only access you had to sneakers even though the internet was around and even for me like back in the day if i wanted to search online uh, you know, it, it, was, it was still difficult because like the most access I had to like when I was in Australia was basically through eBay and you don't know the legitimacy uh, eBay had back then. They, they didn't have sneaker authentication back then so and there were a lot of fakes as well so it, it was kind of hard to kind of you know try to get an, an authentic pair back then for the price that they were willing to go for. Because back then I remember I was trying to get a pair of these. These were a pair of sneaker grails that I wanted back in the day and I could only find them on eBay. Even going through sneaker events or other kind of people in my sneaker circles, I couldn't find a pair of these in my size for uh, you know, for a condition that I wanted and a price that I wanted as well. So, uh, but thankfully, uh, you know, Jordan Brand went and did their retros. And that's another thing guys, because when Jordan wasn't really retroing, uh, you know, the you know, the signature sneakers and stuff, that kind of uh, sneaker grail strength or whatever uh, that kind of sneaker grail meaning back then it was it was a lot higher because generally sneakers were harder to get but as time went on sneakers were easily able to be copped because of like re-retros sneaker platforms and all this kind of stuff and all that kind of information that you can get to cop sneakers was a lot easier to find but some may argue that was probably some of the best things about 
uh, the sneaker culture back in the day because it was harder to find sneakers. It was called the hunt. So you basically had to get your money ready. You had to be prepared to drive all these kind of different distances. You had to uh, basically prepare to meet new people so you can make friends and you know all that kind of stuff just to find new ways to let's say you know find another avenue to get a, to a certain sneaker and uh, you always wanted to increase uh, you know your sneaker kind of connections wherever they may be because they might be selling a sneaker that you want having that sneaker circle uh, increase the bigger was was a really big asset so uh, yeah that's about what basically people had to do and it's sort of like that movie Indiana Jones and the Holy Grail or if you could put like some sort of like connection to it Indiana had to go through all these different obstacles right challenges and near-death experiences just to get that holy grail right and if you adapt that to today's sneaker culture that's sort of like what it was back in the day you had to go through all these challenges you had to find all these different avenues to try and get to just to even find the sneaker you don't know its price you don't know its size you don't know its condition you don't know even know how you're gonna get it to you because sometimes when you have to ask all these different people do you have this size and if miraculously they do have everything in the size you still need to get a ship to you and that could be a whole challenge in itself getting that sent to you was really hard especially in terms of buyer protection and seller protection there wasn't much of that back then so you know there was a lot more challenges which meant that if you were able to get that sneaker grail, it meant more. It was a lot more valuable to you. As you can see, the term sneaker grails back then to what it means now is a little bit like, you know, it's more, yeah, it's, it's kind of changed or kind of evolved in a different way. Yeah, but nowadays there's no more campouts. So the difficulties back then compared to the difficulties you're getting now is just basically just change in a way. Back then it was accessibility to getting a sneaker that was really hard and uh, prices back then weren't that expensive if you want to compare to the prices now obviously and now today's challenges are basically just the price. Sorry if like I've gone on a couple of tangents in terms of sneaker grails but there is in there's so much evolving in terms of sneaker culture uh, throughout the years and uh, sneak, especially sneaker terms such as sneaker grails. Yeah sneaker grails now are basically like one of ones stuff that you don't have access to with money so basically one of ones sample pairs all that kind of stuff signed signature pairs of certain sneakers those are the real sneaker grails that are going for now because you can't just buy them you need to know or you need to have access to those kind of sneakers to actually get them so me personally uh my sneaker grail would have to be something I have I can actually wear I mean it's not ones that I wouldn't say it's a sneaker grail if I can't wear it. if it's like say if it's too small or too big ah oh man I can't if I can't wear it uh, it's not so much I'm gonna value as much as something I can wear personally uh yeah sign pair of Jordan wants to Chicago is in my size oh that would be a huge sneaker grail for me finding or be able to obtain that it's gonna be pretty hard so as long as the difficulty is hard to actually obtain that sneaker, that's more of a sneaker grail, I would like to say. So if, it was, if it's not that, maybe a Dior 1 Low or a Jordan 4 Manila in my size. Because those are really hard to get, um, mainly just because of price. I would say, uh, you know, having access to that kind of thing is really hard because just, you know, you can... I'm pretty sure you can find that kind of stuff on StockX or Goat or whatever. But the, yeah, those are kind of the grail the sneaker grails that i have now and that's another thing uh throughout your lifetime your sneaker grails i do believe will change especially if you can actually buy the sneakers and uh, that's the thing with uh companies and uh big brands is they want to bring back that nostalgia that's why they bring it back you know for all those people that couldn't get sneakers back in the day you know they want to give them up that opportunity to buy them now so they yeah they can get your money <laughs> now uh, for another time so for another generation to actually buy that kind of sneaker and uh, i think that's it's still i think that's in a good way it's bad for people that kind of want to have that sneaker stay stay relevant for a really long time let's just say that imagine if they re-retroed uh, Jordan 1 Travis Scott's uh, you know a lot of people with the Jordan 1 Travis Scott's uh, you know they, they're gonna be like oh man why are they re-retroing it now my value of my sneaker is gonna go down because a lot more people have it that kind of stuff so uh, all that kind of thing so I wouldn't say sneaker culture has changed in a bad way like that's kind of like my meaning of sneaker grail and how it's kind of evolved 
through time. So let me know what you guys think. Do you have sneaker grails that you still want? What are they? Let me know in the comments below. And have I kind of convinced you that sneaker grails has changed over time let me know in the comments below anyway guys thanks once again for watching this video i hope you learned something from it if you liked it please give it a big thumbs up and if you like the content in general please consider subscribing to the channel anyway guys thanks once again for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one peace